Okay, so before we start this video, um, as we record this, we're um, partway through day three of Chandler Holderson's trial, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Okay, we've got up to Catherine Melander's testimony. But before we actually watch her testimony, we thought to be thorough, we'd go back and watch her initial police interrogation. Yeah, just to give us a bit of, you know, background. Yeah, and so we're a bit more informed going into her testimony. Now, um, there's probably about six or seven hours of it. We intend to cover it all. Um, we're going to do it hour by hour, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Um, so please bear with us. We will go back to the Chandler Holderson trial in due course, but we want to watch this first. Um, and secondly, we just want to give a shout out to Rottweiler Investigations, whose footage we're using for this video. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to go and watch the original video, uh, the link to Rottweiler Investigations channel and to the original video we use for this is in the description. Please do go and check them out. Right, you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, there's a poo bear? All right, you can play with it if you want to. Don't have to twist my arm. All right. Oh, did you guys come? I didn't. Okay, I... Oh, it's right over there if you want to. Oh, I can grab it. Okay. I want to hit you with the poo bear. Oh, please don't. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that kind of entrance, were you? No, but then again, it could be nervousness. Yeah, it could be. It could be nerves, but she seems quite chipper, doesn't she? Yeah, at the moment. Um, maybe the poo bear's a comfort thing, you never know. Can you just hang out for a bit? Please. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to Wow, she's got long hair. Yeah, it's very long, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't realise it was that long. But do you know what struck me? What? She's laid down there. It could be first impressions, but it appears to me she's got nothing to hide. Because you think about it, if she was going to lie for Chandler, she'd be pretty agitated or she wouldn't be. She'd just be sat there kind of... Stone-faced. Not so much stone-faced, but kind of maybe wringing her hands or... Biting her nails. Know, fidgeting. But she's sat down with this poo bear and she's just kind of lay down and relaxed. I don't know whether she's going to sleep or whether she's just relaxing. But that to me says that she's not at all on edge. She's ready to tell the officers whatever they want to know. Yeah. Could be wrong, but that's just first impression. I'm sorry I don't do impressions. Two deep breaths that could be construed as sighs, inhalations, ex exhalations, and then eyes darting around the room. She's very aware, isn't she? Yeah, she is, but then again, she has to be. Yeah, maybe the nerves are creeping in, I don't know. Could be, I mean, she's in a police station. Yeah, that's got to set, you, set your nerves on edge, hasn't it, just being in there? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm... Not sure if she's under the impression whether they suspect her of anything or not. I'm I'm not sure, but she does seem quite relaxed for someone who may not know she's under suspicion. Maybe they just wanted the more insight into Chandler. Yeah, I reckon so. I mean, he is their um, chief suspect, isn't he? Yeah. You 
become a water for customer only. I didn't hear you leave. Shut up. Okay, so Kat is actually quite a nice looking girl, isn't she? <laughs> Too nice for him. Yeah, I was just wondering what she would <laughs> see in a spindly leg little cack bucket like him. <laughs> I have to say, while we're waiting for summit to happen, those two couches do look very comfortable. Uh, yeah, I could just sink into them. Yeah, I could. And probably use that poo bear as a cushion as well. <laughs>
Oh. How's it going? Good. I'm just going to give you an extra one of these, okay? Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. That's interesting, isn't it? What is? Leaving the door ajar. Yeah, but she's not a suspect. No, she isn't, but maybe that's a psychological thing to let them, you know, know that she's free to go at any time and she's not under suspicion, could be. Yeah, it could be. Do you reckon they're watching her? They could be watching her reactions, how she's coping, what she's doing. I'm not so sure. I think if she was a person of suspicion, then they would be observing her, you know, quite intently. But maybe she is at this point before they've interrogated her. I don't know. But maybe they suspect her of being, you know, involved with Chandler at this stage of it. Maybe she satisfies their suspicions or rather allays them after she's talked to them today. Because she's his girlfriend? Yeah. Boredom, tiredness, apathy. Who knows, it could just be that she's getting impatient to be kept waiting. Yeah, but once again she's in a police station. And very much like A&E cues here, <laughs> you just got to wait, haven't you? Yeah.
you got to wonder what's going on through her head. Yeah, she's probably wondering what they're going to ask her, what she's going to say. She doesn't know what's going on. No, really. I mean, do, does she think Chandler's involved? Well, you know, obviously her suspicions were, you know, raised when she took the Snapchat of him. True. So, yeah. She's got to know it's something to do with, you know, Chandler's parents or Chandler. I mean, why else would they bring her in? She's done nothing wrong. Dulcie's done nothing wrong. Cress has done nothing wrong. They're um, getting an insight and building the case. Yeah. So, yeah, you're quite right to wonder what's going on through her head at the moment. It's She's probably wondering what's going on. She's probably confused. Like you say, her chipper mood to start with was probably a defence mechanism. Nervous, you know. But I hope they go easy on her because, you know... I'm de- sure they will. Yeah, it depends whether they suspect her at this point or not as to how hard but if Chandler's interrogation is anything to go by I think they will go pretty easy on it because they did on him if you remember yeah they didn't go hard on him no not at all so hopefully she'll have a you know she'll coast through it and just by telling the truth what she knows she'll she'll be okay yeah You sat on a very comfortable couch, cat. Don't knock it. Yeah, unless it's got bloody bed bugs. Do you know what's really pissing me off? 
不好。The officer at the door, speaking in a whisper. I can't hear a bloody word she's saying. I mean, you'd think if this was, you know, part of the evidence, she'd like to preserve it by speaking a bit pissing louder. Yeah, you would think that. <sighs> Ridiculous. When we were there, we were like, fingers crossed, we're just at the casino, blowing money, having fun, living life. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Except every time I go to the casino, I lose money. <laughs> My mom was there the night, other night and got like $600, her and her fiance. Do they go to the one here? By oh, Shine? Oh, oh, they went into Dell's? Oh, no, there's a whole truck right outside Madison, I thought. Oh, that one, yeah. That's, that one is all, what do they have, just the slot machines there? My mom one on one machine twice, I think. Same one, yeah. Uh -huh. I'll buzz it. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. So, as we can see, Kat bought the whole casino story. Yeah. Which makes you wonder why um, even she bought it, because even though Bart was successful, he didn't have money 10 miles up a bull's arse, did he? No, I mean, they weren't known for the gambling. No. So. Wouldn't she think that would be odd behaviour for his parents? I mean, she was dating him for two years. I'm guessing that she knew them pretty well. And by all accounts, she had a really good relationship with Krista. So yeah. wouldn't you think that she'd kind of say, hang on, that sounds a bit out of character for your parents, Chandler? Maybe she thought she'd better not question it. Yeah, maybe she wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. You never At know. The time. Yeah. Emergency Nakalaka application. I'm familiar with it myself.
you to it. Hello, how are you? Very tired. How are you? Hi. So this is George. He's one of my partners. Hi. Anthony, the one that you spoke with me yesterday, he's off today, so you get George. I don't know if you're hungry, but I you two cookies. Is there chocolate? One has chocolate, one doesn't. Okay, I'm allergic to chocolate. Are you really? If I eat it, I'll just projectile vomit. Oh, please don't. don't there's do a, there's if a garbage. I get too emotional, I'll also vomit, so... I think, I know one sprinkles, but you know what? I can put them here if you want it, you want it. That one has chocolate. This one? This one. Oh. Allergic to chocolate. That is bad. I mean, yeah, I can kind of relate now, but before I became a diabetic, I wouldn't have wanted to live if that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I love chocolate. I know. I never met a chocolate I didn't like. <clears throat> I was like... Uh, eat whatever you want that one out. Oh, and then here's your phone, because yesterday was just so fabulous with all of your timestamps on Instagram, or um, Snapchat, so mm -hmm. just in case. Keep on the phone going. There you go. How was work? I was there for 30 minutes, and then they were like, you can go. Oh, how come? I'm a very emotional person. I'm like, I was worried, so I like cried a little bit. Like, when someone walks with me, like, hey, are you okay? I'm like... And then, like, I talked to my pharmacist, and she was like, you can go home. And then I picked up some groceries, took it to Chandler, and cooked him some food. Because he wasn't eating well. Oh, how come? He's nervous about his parents. Okay. I can't eat well when I'm nervous, so. Okay. Took a nibble with the cookie. Yeah. Baby steps. I'm sure there's some chocolate in there. Yeah. Test the water to make sure the police aren't trying to poison me. <laughs> no, we're not. What a peculiar thing to say. Yeah, I mean, she's probably just saying that because some people probably believe that. Possibly, yeah, but it wasn't said in jest because <laughs> you'd, you'd give a laugh at the end of it or you'd smile, but she seemed quite serious. It just seemed a weird thing to say, but like you say, some people are under the illusion that when the police give you a drink or something to eat there's something in it yeah like truth syrup or something yeah it could be but i mean chandler mentioned the same thing in his interrogation didn't he i know it's stupid yeah they seem to think along the same lines those two don't they <laughs> Did she say crocs or clogs? Uh, it sounded to me like clogs. I would hope so, because if she said crocs, I wouldn't have left the bloody house. So, some of it is going to be repeat. I just want to make sure that I'm really understanding everything. So, again, give me your time 
line from Thursday. Thursday I worked. Um, that's when Chandler told me, I think it was Thursday, that his parents were going on up to the cabin um, with some friends. So he was going to be at the house with the dogs by himself all weekend. Um, went to sleep, woke up, got ready for work, went to work. Um, I, we planned that I was going to go over there and spend the night, um, just hang out with him and the dogs. In the couch fort. Because, you know, there's fireworks and Rizzo's very scared of dogs and so, dogs. Fireworks. fireworks yeah. Um, but before that, I had to stop at two different targets to do some grocery pickups. And this was Friday? Yeah. Um, I stopped at Hilldale, my apartment, then I went to... Remember what time you stopped at Hilldale? Got off at 5, so maybe about a 20 minute drive from there, so maybe like 5, 20... 30, yeah. depending on traffic and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, not a young case. Still all I Um. Um. Then I went to my apartment, grabbed clothes, and then I grabbed a bunch so I could do dirty laundry at my mom's house because I knew it would be stopping at my mom's at some point. Um. East Target. Went to my mom's house. So do you not live with your mom? In an apartment. Oh, I didn't know that. I mentioned it yesterday. The Treflogger? No, that's my mom's house. Okay. So then, what is your address? Um, 110 North Bedford Street. It's called Lark at Cole. It's only like a sublet from April to July 29th. So I won't be there longer. I'm just going to go back to my mom's place. Is there a department number, or is that one time? Uh, 321. Karen Anderson? Mm -hmm. All my roommates are on the basketball team for UW. No way. Yeah. Uh, Lovisa, Lexi, and Tara. Lovisa is from Sweden, and she is 6'3". How do you get out with those girls? Do you know any of them? Sublet. Just got lucky. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. We grow a sublet from play for the tennis team. I used to play tennis in high school, so... That's how we connected. Okay. I'm sorry, you said you went to East Target? That You went from Hilldale to East Target? No, from Hilldale to apartment to grab dirty clothes and clothes. To East, to my mom's house, to grab the hydrogen peroxide and the Swiffer because Chandler broke the glass of the fireplace that day and cut his toe, so we had wanted to clean that and then clean up the glass and blood. And then we had burgers for dinner because he made me burgers because he burned his hands on the grill. And then, Hilldale, apartment to get dirty clothes, to use Target to get the Swiffer. No, mom no. was supposed to get the Swiffer. Mom was to get the Swiffer. Yes. She's, then. Then East because I wanted some pickled jalapenos. Mm. They're a good snack. Um. So then to Chandler's, and then I was there, and then I left in the morning because he wanted to do chores, and then I know what time I, around what time I was home, I took a picture. Do you know what the chores were? Like, what does that mean? Chores, like, his fam family usually gives him housework, like, you know the grass outside the front of his house? He usually has to take that to the dump. Um, probably... Yeah. Make sure all the remaining glasses up. You know, do his laundry. Do you know when did he go to the dump? I think he said he went, but it was closed, oh. or that they were just closed. I don't know if he drove all the way there. Um. I think I remember something coming up where he'd gone to the the town dump. He'd gone to the tip, hadn't he? Yeah, I think I heard something about that. Yeah, um, not sure, but. Maybe he was planning to to dispose some of some of the stuff there, but it's just very very curious to hear Cat talk, and she's just completely unaware of what he's been, what he did, and what he's been trying to do. 
especially you know the the shenanigans he got up to at Cress's farm you know what I mean yeah I mean that was just weird yeah and then So on your um, Snapchat, do you manually enter your location or is it just through your... Whenever you open Snapchat, it has your location. Okay. Yeah, unless you turn it off. Okay. And so on Saturday, I was with my dog at 8.53 a.m. So did you see um, the fireplace? Hmm? What did it look like? Like, broken. It was like one pane, I think, on the left side. Um, yeah. And did you see, like, the blood in the glass? Was that all picked up? It was pretty much all picked up, except like a little bit of glass was still there. Um, honestly, I didn't see like a lot of blood, but probably because it was only a cut on his big toe. Okay. Yes, and the blood was by the fireplace, I assume? Hmm? The blood was by the fireplace? I think so. Yeah. I didn't, like, see it, you know? Oh, you didn't see the blood? No. Oh, okay. That's how much she trusted him. She didn't doubt him. She didn't doubt his word. God knows that she had reason to mistrust him, because apparently he did cheat on her. So she did have reason to mistrust him, but it appears that everything he told her, certainly about this, about the fireplace incident she just swallowed she trusted him blindly yeah and if he cheated on her then she shouldn't have given her trust away again so easily because if he's going to lie to her once he's going to lie to yeah, her again but maybe it, she didn't think he had it in in him to kill them maybe not but you never know when you look at people nowadays do you yeah that's true especially people close to you Where do you, like, go in the house? Like, where do you normally, like, hang out with Chandler? All the floors, like, his bedroom. That night, we were mostly just in the living room. So there, the bathroom, to the kitchen, second living room, his room. Okay. Like, I just don't go in his parents' room or the spare bedroom. And I think Friday night. No, I didn't shower Friday night. I showered Sunday night, I think. Yeah. So Friday night, didn't shower. Slept in the couches. So we could be with the dogs. Woke up, went to my mom's house to be with my dogs, and because they had to do the chores. Came over around, like, lunch-ish time, like noon, I believe. 11 noon time. Um... We hung out, watched Daybreak on Netflix because we started that Friday night. Watched it. Then he left around like before five, so maybe like maybe late three, almost four to before five. Like no. I straightened my hair. That takes about twenty minutes. Chandler was gone. I also did my eyebrows. So that's about another 10 minutes. The eyeliner and everything, so. I'd be like 420 at the latest is probably when he left. Some of the stuff he talked about in his interrogation is actually tying up with some of the stuff she said. For example, the Netflix Daybreak series they, they were watching. He mentioned that, do you remember? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so some of it is tying up, but I don't know whether the times are pretty comparable to you. There were so many mentioned during his interrogation. Oh, there were so many times and dates. Yeah, it would be nice to know if, you know, his time's tied up with what Kat is saying now. And Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. So yeah. you were getting ready at your house? Mm -hmm. Because we went out with Rose, remember? Rose and my brother. Well... We, as in me and my brother, went with Rose. Chandler was at his house. Um, so did you guys meet up at your house or mom's house? My mom's house. Okay. When I say our house, I mean my mom's okay. house. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. 
Um, and then Rose got there around 5, and then we went, it's not really, like, relevant to the story, but, like, we went, got Sencha downtown, walked up to the restaurant on the square that was closed, so we walked down to Ian's, went from Ian's to the fireworks show. I have the picture of my ticket. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Oh, was that the one at, um... The Isthmus? Yes, the Isthmus. The Foods Lights at the Isthmus. Pink ticket. How was it? It was like a 20-minute show. They they said it was supposed to start at 8.30. We sat there till like 9.30, 9.45 before it went off. I heard it was lame. Yeah. Sat there, like, I feel like my butt's still bruised because we got there around like 7.35. Sat there for like two hours. Okay. On bleachers. Not fun. Then we went home. Woke up. Um... Rose and I went to Starbucks and Panera to pick up bagels and coffee. Um, is this Sunday now? Yes. Okay. So when you say you went home, you went to... Mom's. Your mom's? Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, that begs the question, doesn't it? Were Dulce and Cress actually living together or did they have separate places? I'm guessing they had separate places. Yeah, maybe they did. I mean, you know, the, both were welcome to go over to the others, I'm sure, but um, when she said went to her mum's place, I'm sure if it was Cressy's farm, she would have, you know, if they were living together, she would have said, I've gone to Cressy's farm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what the living arrangements were. And you slept there? Yes. Okay. So, like, some coffee. Where are you driving? Oh, um, so... Uh, in the morning for like Starbucks or like the fireworks show? The whole shebang. So, okay. So Friday, um, what were you driving? Friday, my red Subaru, which is under my mom's name, Dulce Melander. Um, you know the um, plates? Uh, v E R. I don't know the numbers. Okay. I know it's V E R. But if you look inside, you can see dog toys on the, like, windshield thing. Oh, yes! For my dogs, but... Um, so that, and then when it was, like, going downtown to get Sencha, it was, um, my brother's car, which is a Mazda Black... I don't know his plate numbers. Um, and then... When we went to get Starbucks and then the Panera, my Subaru again. Red Subaru Forester 2012. Sorry. You're good. Stomach acid. That was Sunday, right? That you went to get... Starbucks and Panera. And then... What time do you think that was at? Morning? I think I might have a screenshot of my receipt. I went to a Starbucks once, and then they said they never got my order, and I didn't have, like, the receipt, so I just take screenshots of my receipts now. Um, what um, Starbucks did you go to? East Side one. The one by the East Town Mall. Okay. So expensive. I had stars, so it was free. Oh. They stopped doing the birthday ones. Did they? Mm -hmm. That's evil. So, my order for Panera was ready at 9.43 at the time set. In the corner, it says 9.33 a.m. She is very fastidious, isn't she? She is, yeah. Yeah, almost to the point of OCD, but that's a good thing, because certainly in this case, it's good that she had so much documentation to back up what she was saying. Yeah, and she's got so much information to give them. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then we went back, hung out, like, had breakfast, Chandler got there around, like, maybe the area between 12 and 1-ish, because I remember, let me check my call logs. Because he FaceTimed us while we were in Ross, dressed for less. It's giving me 
Chubby shoes. Helping out with suggestions. Dad shoes. Chunky dad shoes. <laughs> Chandler approved. <laughs> And I remember our call dropped many times. Because there's no signal in there. You just saw him falling right. Just you and Rose went to get Starbucks and Panera. Yep, and then when we, like, um, yes, just her and I, my brother stayed home because he was smoking ribs. Oh, okay. I love ribs. Yes. So then, on... Um, Saturday night, did Chandler spend the night with you at the house? Nope, he was at his house. So he went home? Yep. Okay. Yeah. He was home Saturday night. Yeah. And then... We were at, like, Ross. I think... Uh, one twelve is what I'm thinking. One twelve. Yes. Um, because, I'm trying to like, piece it together. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think we were like, I don't think we were in Marshall's when he gave me a call. He was sleeping, I think. Okay. It's because when he arrived, um, he was there for, like, we were all there for a little bit. And then Rose wanted to go to Ross, and so Chandler stayed in my room to take a nap, because, you know, his legs have been having problems, so he couldn't do the walking around thing, which is fair. Bullshit. Fair. And so, we went from Ross, I have a picture of my receipt from Marshall's, um, which is what I took in the car before we went back to the house. Um... And that was taken at 2.14 p.m. And that was from where? Marshalls. Marshalls. Mm -hmm. Love that place. Me too. They had like Calvin Klein stuff in, so had to cop. Had to cop. Th think of the contrast between how credible she is as a witness uh, versus Chandler, because Chandler was very vague. Obviously, he had a lot more to hide. Of course it did. But she is clarifying everywhere she has been with a screenshot or a copy of receipts. Or, or photo time and dated. Yeah, she, she is literally bringing the receipts as to where she's been and what she's been doing since the time Bart and Krista disappeared, as they think at the moment. So she is highly credible as a witness and... You know, she's basically telling us all. She's telling the detective. She's telling everyone that watches this. She's got nothing to hide. No, she hasn't. Do you drink a bottle of water? Hmm? Do you drink a bottle of water? Yeah, I was really nervous. You gotta go to the bathroom. That's oh, nice. I went before. Okay, it's literally right there. Just let us know. You can go. Thank you. Yeah. I will not pee on your couches. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Who would not appreciate that? I don't want to disappoint Pip. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yes, and then from there, um, we went back to the house, and then, so we were kind of like running behind, because like dinner was supposed to be like around 3.30, and so like Chandler and I, um, we got in my car, so he could go, we drove to his house, so we could let the dogs out. Who let the dogs out? Um, I think I forgot to mention that to you, that we went to Windsor to take his dogs out. And then... What time was that, you think? Uh, I don't know. Well, 2.14 was on the way back to Mar- or from Marshall's. On In the, the way car, in yeah. Marshall's parking. Ross parking lot, because we walked to Marshall's. Okay. So, our house is maybe like a 10 minute drive from there, and then we were getting out like a couple minutes on the check. But, like, we were, <sighs> mm. 
Can I check my... I might have a quick trip re receipt, because I went to Quick Trip when we left his house. Do you know what Quick Trip you went to? The one by the roundabouts uh, in DeForest Windsor area. I can't remember if that's the same one that Krista went to, but it sounds familiar, doesn't it? It does. I think it was. Possibly. You know, like the road down the water tower? Yep. Windsor Road exit? Quick Trip. Is that that quick trip all by itself, kind of? Yeah. By 50 down is it? by the pool at the farm after we had dinner, I think. Did you make dinner at 3.30? I think we had it around like maybe 3.45. Oh, it's a little late. Yeah. My mom was not happy. The food was good. She made crab salad. Um... She is being very engaging with them, isn't she? She's kind of talking to them as though the friends rather than two detectives, isn't she? Yeah, she's put she's put at ease. Yeah, she's put at ease, and I think that she's putting them at ease. Um, she's being open with them. Yeah, very open, answering the questions, maybe over answering them in some <laughs> some instances. I mean, she is very verbose. That's something she has in common with me, isn't it? But yeah, um, she is coming over as very very credible. The fourth, five thirty p.m. That is Chandler cleaning the bugs off the pool, and the girl is Rose. Okay. Why was he wearing a long sleeve shirt? Wasn't it like ninety on? Oh, he wears long sleeve shirts. This is his thing. Oh. He doesn't like t-shirts really. Oh, okay. Like, almost all the pictures were in. He's wearing like a long sleeve. Probably because he's got arms like sticks. What time is that video? Um, 5.30. I'm going to approach. Alright, you're fine. It says right there at the top, and the dates. Okay. <laughs> I love that, how oh, she said, I'm going to approach. Yeah, it's like she's channeling Jennifer Wilmot. <laughs> yeah, except less snappy. Yeah. And then we left around 6.30 because he had to be home before 8 to feed the dogs their dinner. And so we left around 6.30, probably got to like the my mom's house. I'm not going to throw it. Um, There's a garbage or a bathroom. I think I'll look oh, really sus if I stand up and run out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get tackled. I'm, I'm not going to tackle you. You, oh. you can go if you need to. Oh. You're good. Okay. Mm. So you left around 6.30 because Chandler needed to feed the dogs. Yes. Did you stay on Sunday at his house or mm -hmm. did you go? Okay. I stayed with him. But um, when we first got to my mom's house, he left right away to go straight to his house to feed the dogs. I got my wet clothes out of uh, the like uh, washer because I was going to dry my clothes there. And, um, so I did that, packed everything I needed, went to his place, he threw everything in the dryer, which I'm not supposed to do, that separate stuff to hang it. So, like, we took time to, like, pull stuff out and hang it. Why? We just stick all our shit in the tumble dryer, don't we? Yeah, or hang it up on the line. Yeah, which, if it's nice weather, we'll hang it up, but if it's pissing down, or if it's snowing or whatever, we'll take it to bloody laundry and stick it in a dryer we don't you know why should you separate it all mate you probably are meant to but we don't do we no we just stick it all together can't be arsed doing that can we <laughs> i 
And then we went to um, his mom's co-worker's house, Dan, and he did some fireworks in the street. And we did that for like maybe an hour. And then went back, took a shower, um, I blew dry my hair. Went back to... His house. Okay. And then went to bed around like 12 in the morning because, you know, fireworks going off, Rizzo's jumping on everything, sure. barking, crying. Poor girl. Um, are we stopping at Sunday or are we going on till Tuesday? Keep on going. All right, keep on trucking. So from You're doing good, so it's fine. I'll let you keep going. I really try to remember things. Um, and then Sunday woke up, got ready. Sunday I, or Monday? Monday, sorry. Okay. Left around 7.40 because I took a picture at 7.33 of us. Is he sleeping? No, he was awake. Oh, okay. He just rests his eyes a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, and his long sleeve again. And then I went to work. I don't know if you want to see a picture of me at my job because I took a picture. In the hazardous section. Me in the hazardous medication. Let me see that. Why do you look? What shirt do you have on? Billy Eilish? Yeah. It was a sweater over a black t-shirt. You look super pumped to be at work. Oh, hazardous is so fun. <laughs> no, I'm just tired. Um, so... What time was that picture? 9.16 a.m. 9.16 a.m. Um, and then... After work, I... What time you get done with work? So I was working 8.30 to 5. 8.30 so, to 5. Yeah, that's the hazardous shift. We do a rotating schedule. Um, you get a lunch break? Yeah. It's a long day. Yeah, I get a 30 minute lunch break. Okay. 15 minute break if I choose. We don't have time. Take it. Take a break. We don't have time. Um, from there, I went to my mom's house. Um, because Chandler went to the farm. Because uh, my mom's fiance lets him walk in the pool because that's one of the things we did Sunday because it helps stretch out his legs, make him feel better. Because I also help stretch his legs on Friday. God, just goes to show you how all in he went on this. Of course he did. He planned. It was completely planned. I know, but having his girlfriend stretch his legs when there's absolutely nothing wrong with him what an absolute tit and also doing his laundry <sighs> this guy's just pond scum isn't he he is um because he has some like some, some tired numbness that's the word and then from his fall he had a couple weeks back one wedding cake <laughs> And, um, so from there, he came over to my house. But before that, I went to McDonald's. So he probably got to my house around, like, 7, 10, because he, be like, beat me there because I was in the McDonald's line. But there's a guy screaming at someone in the window, and I took a video of it at the McDonald's. 7.14. Wow. Yeah. Down that Milwaukee Street, right? Yeah, the one your friend liked a lot. <laughs> Do you know when we talked about, you know, how fastidious and what a good witness she is and yeah. able to back everything up? You could look at it from the other side. Maybe she's going out of a way to provide an alibi for herself. That's the other way you could look at it. Just occurred to me. But I do tend, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't think she had anything to do with it. I don't even think she knew, had an inkling of what was going on. No, she didn't. But just the way she's acting at the moment, you know, just putting her thumbs up every time she's verified she's got footage of something or a receipt or something, it could be construed as suspicious, couldn't it? It could, if... Just looking at it from both sides and trying to be balanced. Yeah. 
You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I just kind of, it would look suspicious if we had any, you know, suspicion, if you like, that she had anything to do with it, but we don't. Um, and then he ate and then left. And he stayed at his parents' house. I stayed at my mom's house. Woke up, went to work. I think I have a picture of... What time did he get to your house on Monday to use the pool? On the farm? Mm-hmm. Let me check my call records. Um, so I called him around 5.02 when I got off work and I got into my car. And I think he was starting to drive at that time. Um. Drive. From Windsor. To. The farm. Farm. Okay. That's a really sweet cookie. Um, you hate it. Huh? I didn't make it, so. Um, so there's that, and then I called my mom and the farm because they weren't answering his calls. And then I think I finally got a hold of my mom, and then my friend called. And then. Yeah, he was around there at 7, 7.05, he might have been close, because we have a call at 7.05 that lasted 4 minutes. Yes, that's I think when he was close. And then, he left, and then Tuesday I woke up, went to work. Um. Went back to my mom's house because he wanted to come over and I was going to cook his pork chops while my mom changed everyone's mind because she really wanted Buffalo Wild Wings. Because the thing we do with Chandler is buy one, get one, and we do two orders of that, so we get like 60 wings. Um, so we did that. And then Chandler watched Legally Blonde with us, and I remember there was a storm happening. So you went to mom's after work? Mm -hmm. And it's it, easier because it's like halfway between the apartment and his house. Okay. So from mom's, then we went to the farm. Mm. Right? Is that what you said? No. Right. On Monday, he went from the farm to mom's house. And then Tuesday, we didn't go to the farm. Okay. So Tuesday, you were at mom's house. Tuesday, at mom's house. Chandler, was he there already? He wasn't there before I got there. Okay. What time did Chandler get there? Maybe like six. I think six. This must have been the bead ups that um, Dulce was talking about when she was testif testifying. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. 60 wings, bloody hell. <laughs> and then there was a storm happening while he was there. At 8.02, so he probably left, like, a little later, like, maybe 8.30 is when he left. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. Yeah, because the video is from 8.02. And then he was in the bathroom at that point. I remember it because he takes, like, 20 minutes in the bathroom. And then we hung out yesterday. Wasn't I? Did you go over to Chandler's on Wednesday? No, we yesterday? hung out. I know, but did after you and I had our epic? No, out? I went to my friend Danny's. Um, I told you how I went to hang out with Danny. His girlfriend Abigail works at David's Bridal, so I met them there. Um, and then we went and got dinner at Guadalajara, which is close to downtown. And then we went back to their condo and I stayed on their futon because I didn't think it was a good idea for me to go to my apartment and just lay there alone. <laughs> um, and 
done. Let's work the day for only 30 minutes. Why only 30? I was crying. Okay. Can I'm an emotional you, person. Can I ask what you're crying about? My boyfriend's parents are missing. Like, I, I think it's more concerning if I wasn't concerned. I'm a very emotional person. Like, I cry enough for both of us is, like, what I like to say. Sure. Like, it's like I hang out with the family often, you know? There's parents. They're important. Like, I hang out with them. We play Mario Kart. His mom makes a toad sound every time she selects toad. No, Yoshi. The Yoshi sound. That's exactly how she does it. Um. So far in the comments, we've not had really anyone that has come forward and said they suspected Kat of being involved. And from what she's just said, kind of what she's just relayed there, um, I completely agree. Because you wouldn't find someone who was that cold-blooded relating someone like that unless they're a very, very good actor. That's true. So, yeah, um, I, don't th I personally don't think she had anything to do with this. I think it was all him. And I, I think she was horrified when she found out. Yeah, I don't think she had anything to do with it. No. I think uh, if she did, I think uh, Chandler would have threw her under the bus. I think he already tried to. I think there are people in the comments telling us now that they believe that Chandler was willingly trying to frame not just Kat, but her mother and Cress. Jesus. So, yeah. Um, the comments are starting to come in about that, and they are very, very interesting. Lose every time, but like... Like, I, I don't know. I just don't understand how you couldn't, like, be worried or yeah. emotional. I know. I mean, that's why we're here. We're worried. Yeah. You're worried. Like As, is, is, how's Chandler been? Like I said, he's not really, he expresses it in a different way. He's not, like, the biggest emotional person, but, like, I guess, like, when I look at him, it's different when other people look at him. Like, I can tell it's really hard on him. And, like, he just sits there and associates and, like, paces and, like, you know, just sits there, like, wearing my parents like a shell. And, like, when his brother was over, like... When was that? They left around, like... Today? Yeah. Like, before they went to the cabin, they left around, like... Two ish, they're there at like 20 minutes at most, but like he's following his big brother around. I think there's a reason why Chandler wasn't saying much and was acting like more or less a shell and you know, um, you know, just trying to act all melancholy, and that's because he didn't want anybody to ask too many questions. No, so he just acted normal, yeah. Well, not so much normal, but you know, um, injured and you know, Over worried. The top. Yeah, very much over the top, but he was definitely trying to act worried, and I think that was just basically stalling everybody, stonewalling them to stop them asking questions. Yeah, to say, well, uh, Chandler's very upset. I mean, you think about it, how do you approach and ask about somebody's parents who are missing, You and, and they're, it looks like they're worried about it, it looks like they're down, you're not going to want to bring it up, are you? So I think he was playing on that as well. Yeah, and I... I think also sympathy. Exactly, yeah. Like subtle things, like most people have noticed, but like dating him for a while. What was um? What, what was Mitchell doing there at the house, just looking around the house? Looking for anything Chandler missed, and like grabbing the spare keys to go up to the cabin, or keys that Chandler found in his dad's car that they think are the spare keys to the cabin. 